Hello friends, I'm back for part two and hopefully um, I will finish in this particular part um, without too many glitches. Well, what I've done uh, since last we met was to move my masking tape from below the horizon line to up above the horizon line so that I can work on my, um, on my ocean and I'm going to be using cobalt blue, a touch of alizarin crimson to gray it down a little bit, and some white. I'm going to be using this, um, well, I can't read the number. It says a number four brush, and it's a chisel edge and I find that helpful for these smaller areas. And what I like to do with the water to suggest movement in the water is to uh, layer these lines and make them parallel so that, um, as you can imagine, they will leave stripes. This is one of the most difficult things new painters have a problem with is putting colors side by side, parallel, if you will, because that creates the illusion without blending the colors together. And although I will do some blending, I don't want to blend out those um, parallel lines that I'm putting in. And I'm going to start over on um, a sort of the middle and do some kind of broken marks. I can go over my masking tape. There isn't going to be a lot of ocean on this painting because the view is going to be from directly behind the sand dunes toward the ocean. And as you probably know, it would depend on how close you are to the ocean as to how much of that you're going to be seeing. The tape serves a purpose, but in the process it also somewhat confuses the visual. One thing that's happening here, if you can see this, um, I have some paint further up on my bristles so that if I press down slightly, I leave a little trail. And that's a good thing because it, it gives the illusion that I'm looking for. These are creating some shadow areas that I can capitalize on later. And the same is going to be true these white areas.
when removing the tape, you should always pull the tape in the direction of the paint. So in case there's some paint trapped on the tape, it'll pull down in the direction where the paint is already wet. Okay. Today I have a little better lighting situation, so hopefully the videotape will be better. Um, I have covered my sand again. I did not like that warmer gray, and so uh, I'm going to work with this, but I'm going to go back through here and make a little better transition between the water and the sand. and. Um, Ultimately, this is going to be lighter anyway, but um, just so it doesn't look so dramatically different. Um, now, I'm, I'm working from left to right, uh, starting to the left and moving backwards, actually, and that keeps me from developing so much of a pattern, which I have been... Um, sort of preaching against, if you will. Um, and in that, in that way, I can um, vary my strokes a little bit, but I still find that I have to go back and pay close attention to what I'm actually doing um, along the way. Because I'm using the liquid medium, my paint in this section is very um, translucent, but that's okay because the water itself is very transparent over the mud, so um, to keep it real, so to speak, this works just fine. I'm paying fairly close attention to this area right now because at some point pretty soon I'm going to have sea oats coming over this part and I will not be able to make any changes.
I need to mention at this point that I am back to working with my chisel edge brush, that number four Royal and Langnickel brush, which is excellent for this kind of work in small spaces. I'm beginning here to do some scumbling over my sand and I'm using a white bristle brush, a flat brush, and I'm using it um, flat on my canvas um, with my palm down as you notice and I'm just laying some groundwork here for highlighting my sand dunes and placing them and then um, in just a few minutes I'm going to be placing my seagrass and my sea oats and all of this just to give me a sense of where I'm going with this painting. Um, there's going to be a lot of foreground in this painting that's going to require a lot of um, marsh grass and sea oats and other kinds of little, well, pieces of uh, broken shells and uh, little pieces of weeds and so forth. But this is just laying some more of the groundwork. I'm going to be using for my sea oats um, these fan brushes. Um, I have one fan brush, the smaller one is worn out and it makes an excellent brush to begin with little, little patches of grass and weeds and there are a lot of weeds on the beach um, but I'm going to be using that but what I'm using here is a worn out white bristle brush that the bristles are spread out so that they allow me to use a little speckle effect and I'm using in this section for these sea grasses, I'm using Viridian Green, Cadmium Yellow Medium, and just a touch of Cadmium Red Medium, just enough to gray it down. I don't want these greens to be intense in case I have to cover them up, but for now they're giving me enough of a contrast to um, give me some idea where I want to go with the seagrass and the sea oats. going to be able to um, go back and work on my sky. Um, from seeing them in the video, I'm just not satisfied that there are enough, but as you will see, 
it's a little bit tricky because um, in the beginning I have to go back and wipe some of it out because it's um, I got too much liquid in it but those are the kinds of things that you learn to deal with and if this were a perfect world then um, that wouldn't be necessary but I have a good deal more work to do on this painting so um, just hang in there with me and we'll get it finished Thank you for watching. I'm trying to keep my tutorials to 20 to 30 minutes, so there will be a part three. And please like, comment, share, or subscribe to my channel. Thank you again, and I'll be back.